Fermat's theorem bridges the gap between the notions of minimum and maximum of functions and the derivative of a function. So suppose we, again, we have a function defined on i, a real valued function, and suppose that f has a relative minimum or maximum in c. And not only it has a relative minimum of maximum in c, but also suppose that the function is differentiable in c, so that f prime c exists. Then Fermat says that uh, the derivative should be zero. So what can we learn? What do we learn from this? In particular, if ha f has a local maximum or minimum in C, then either of two cases can hold. So suppose we have a local or relative maximum of minimum in C. Then Fermat's theorem says that when f prime C exists, then the derivative should be equal to zero. So that's one case. Or we must conclude that the function is not differentiable at C. Well, this we will exploit in the coming clips to find extrema. So, a couple of remarks. Uh, being a critical point is a necessary condition for this theorem. Uh, it's not a sufficient condition. So, what do I mean by that? Uh, is illustrated by an example. So if we look at the cubic function, the cubic function fx equals x to the power 3, then the derivative is 3 times x squared, so we find 0 as a stationary point. But we also know that x to the power 3 has no extreme value, especially not in x equals 0. So we can have stationary points without relating to extreme values of a function. Well, the second condition, so an example of a function um, with a maximum or minimum, an absolute maximum or minimum, if the derivative does not exist. Well, that's again the classic one. So look again at fx equals the absolute value. If we look at fx equals the absolute value, then we already found the critical point in zero. Yeah, in zero the function is not differentiable. You have a kink over there. And we find x equals zero uh, then x equals 0 delivers a global minimum of the function f0 equals 0. Uh, 